That's a really good question. I thought, I thought about wearing it, wow. you know, like, uh, like, you know, bling. Um, thank you, wrestling. Pretty good. Thank you. you. You roll with the punches. No, thank you. Uh, I love the hit. Frank Castle is in my bones. You know, like Frank Castle is in my bones. Like, you know what? I, I can't look. What do you think it was about the original Clerks that made a studio gravitate towards it and a big audience that wound up becoming your audience? I tell you, for years, I never understood why people liked Clerks so much. It's like in black and white. It's got nobody famous in it and stuff. Looks like it was made by children, and it was. Um, I used to, you know, just think, well, we were part of the 90s, and, and so sentimentally and nostalgically, will always be wrapped up in, in some people's hearts. But, you know, I'm 30 years almost in on the job now. And I think I completely understand why Clerks not only connected then, but why, like, people still talk about it today, even though it's an old-ass black-and-white movie that was made in the 90s. I used to think this movie will never play outside of New Jersey. You know, if, you don't, if you're not from Monmouth County, New Jersey, how could you understand this? When it went to Sundance, I was like, wow, not only did it play outside New Jersey, but it played uh, at a film festival, but it'll never play outside the United States. This is a very American film. And then it played outside the United States. Turns out that movie can be appreciated by anybody who's ever had a shitty job. And that's literally everybody in the world. So for that reason, it's like one of the most identifiable flicks in the world like i don't know if a billionaire wakes up watches clerks and go been there unless that was one of those billionaires that like started in retail or some such shit but most of us get up and have to go to a job i did for a long ass time until i made a movie about doing it and then i was, all of a sudden my job became making movies so everyone in the world has had a job they don't want to be at even if you've had a great job it's a job that sometimes you don't want to be at and it's a job where you'll do anything but the job itself while you're on the clock, which is all Dante and Randall do. They just sit around and do anything except wait on customers. They'll talk about anything, dissect anything, make anything trivial super important to avoid the fact that, like, ugh, we're stuck here right now. So I, I, th I think I get it after all this time. Like, the same way that people, like, uh, my kid obsesses over The Office and watches it on repeat. You know, it's a, it's a show about people that, go to work and sooner or later everybody does there's only a rarefied few in this country that don't know what it's like to have to get up and go to a place you don't want to go to but have to because that's going to pay the bills so i think that's part of the charm in the movie why it's lasted so long have you thought about what it'd be like to try to shoot and sell clerks like today like when there's kind of so much competition but there's still a lot of avenues with streaming do you think it's easier for for people starting out now I think, I think it's far more difficult if i was going to make clerks today i would do it the way we're doing kilroy with guy and secret network and legend Dow. um when i made clerks back in like 1993 you know only a couple networks no streamers movies were in movie theaters Indie films were in indie theaters and indie film was a burgeoning market where suddenly people were telling off mainstream stories and people were, studios were buying whole divisions that would do this. Disney at one point bought a very successful Miramax so they had their own art house division. But it was still a very small pool. Um, now that pool is the ocean. It's all the seas. Um, there is con so much content that we drown in it. You can't watch everything, everything anymore. You got to be picky and choosy about the stuff you do watch because there's so much of it. You can't possibly get to it all. So if I was starting today, the dream of like, I'm going to make a film that plays in a movie theater and in an indie art house wouldn't be the same because like the films that play at indie art houses have movie stars and budgets of 20 to 40 million knives out was considered by a lot of people to be an indie film played at a lot of indie theaters and stuff wonderful movie but how is somebody with a no budget first time film supposed to find their way into a marketplace where that counts as an indie film and should i'm not trying to take it away i'm just saying when i started the job 
you weren't competing with like Fargo that came years later and stuff, you know, you were making a scrappy independent film. So that was before we've seen the decline of exhibition, you know, and, and the death of some movie theater chains during the course of COVID um, and a marketplace that, you know, pre predominantly rewards Marvel movies, Star Wars movies with, you know, big budgets at the box office and indie film has kind of, you know, gravitated toward Netflix and Hulu and HBO Max. And there's just not the same model that existed when I started. So naturally, I wouldn't think about making this, making clerks and trying to take it into a movie theater. I would be doing it the same way. I'd be doing it as an NFT. That's where most indie filmmakers are now. I've found the true like hardcore, low budget guerrilla filmmakers who have no access to anything don't have access to movie stars or budget, but still tell their stories. You know, that's the playground where a lot of people are heading. Some people hear the word NFT and like have read half an article or a paragraph from something somewhere and made up their mind about something they don't really know all that much about. It's a wide place, the cryptoverse. And yes, there are people um, who mint lots of NFTs and, and try to scam people out of money, I guess. Um, what, a lot of filmmakers like myself or like what I, I would be doing is if I was Kevin Smith trying to make clerks today is using this place where you have a very dedicated audience who believes in, in the media and believes in the medium, um, artistic support um, from people who aren't looking for the next show to drop on Netflix on Friday or something like that. It's where like, independent artists and independent audience have kind of gone. They've moved into the cryptoverse, into web three. So I, honestly, that's what I'd be trying to do today. I'd be making clerks. I'd be trying to hook up with secret network with legend. How the people were doing kill I was here with. Um, they had a great idea when we were like, we want to take this movie out and just auction it to the highest bidder, which is like what I did at Sundance with clerks. And these cats were like, don't do that. We'll just mint a bunch of these man. And, there'll be a certain amount and that's what we'll sell. So rather than it going to one person, maybe it'll go to a bunch of people. I honestly feel like that's where I'd be right now. I wouldn't be trying to make a film for a movie theater. Like that's for rich people at this point. I'd be trying to do it and bring it into the NFT space where I'd be welcome on Web3.